Okay, so I know it's been a long time since I recorded one of these. Uh, I actually did this one in January. I just haven't had the chance to voice it over and put it up. But today I'm going to show you guys how to make yogurt. And it's actually so simple. I can't believe I haven't done it before when I actually buy yogurt. But So the, the main ingredient in yogurt is milk, of course. And if you live in a place like Ontario, you get awful bagged milk. And this is about the only thing bagged milk is good for because you can use a whole bag at once. So today I'm using two four-thirds of a liter bags of milk. And I'm just going to pour it into a pot here. And I don't spill this time, but I've spilt these stupid bags all over the stove before. And we're going to put it in a pot and just cook it for a little bit. Just enough to denature some of the proteins to help it set better. And it'll also... I don't know if this is actually true. I heard that this will help reduce some of the bacteria that's already in it so that the bacteria we're adding deliberately to make the yogurt will be more likely to take over on their own. So basically what yogurt is, is it's just milk that's being fermented with certain strains of bacteria and they produce lactic acid and proteins get denatured and they sort of assemble and you get a very a thickened product just from these proteins kind of assembling. So we'll just heat this up on medium low and you want to keep stirring this while it's heating up just make sure the, the bottom doesn't get scalded especially if you're using crappy pots like these and just pay close attention to the temperature I want to bring it up somewhere between 75 and 80 degrees Celsius and we're just going to hold it there for 15 minutes and you might see this kind of skin forming on the top just take it out with a spoon and and don't just throw it out. Don't try to stir it back in. It's um, it's basically congealed protein. It won't dissolve, and it will just end up back in your yogurt. So let it cool back to about 37 or 40 degrees. And then to get our bacteria, the first time I bought some plain yogurt, and I'm just gonna add for this batch about four tablespoons of plain yogurt. This is just to give the bacteria source. If you make this again, just save some of your previous batch and use it to start the next and you don't have to buy yogurt again. And the nice thing is it actually freezes pretty well. So if you freeze a, a few tablespoons of yogurt uh, and you go on vacation or something, you know, when you get back, you'll still have something to start your next batch. And we'll just stir that in. You can also buy frozen yogurt cultures. Different bacteria produce different tastes. So feel free to experiment. Thankfully, milk is far, far cheaper than yogurt, so it's not a big deal to play around with this a bit. So once that's stirred in, we're going to pour this into some kind of container that's going to do the fermentation. Here, I've got these nice plastic ice cream tubs. Now, if you're like me, you have a nice temperature control water bath to do this in. So we're basically going to be holding the, the milk at 37 degrees for about six or seven hours. But what you can also do, if you have a cooler like this and no temperature controls, you can fill it up with water uh, a little bit hotter than what you want it to be at, so about 42 or 43. And it should stay hot enough for, for six or seven hours. Other people have uh, heated up the oven, turned it off, and then put it in there. So after, after six or seven hours, this is what it looks like. And you can tell it's ready. You can see the, uh, the proteins coagulated. You can see it sort of separates from the edge, and then the white or the, the yellow liquidy stuff is the whey. So for this batch, uh, I'm going to make strained yogurt for half of it, and then the rest I'll just keep as normal yogurt. So if you watch my mascarpone video, it's a similar idea. I'm just going to strain it through a couple of paper towels, which works quite well. And it takes it takes I left it overnight. But it, it takes a few hours. You can leave it longer to make it thicker. So this is what was known as Greek-style yogurt or strained yogurt. It's kind of a thicker, richer product. And if you're lactose intolerant, it's good because a lot of the lactose actually stays in the whey. And this is what the unstrained yogurt looks like. So you can see when it's warm, it's still pretty thin. So you're going to put it in the fridge along with the strained stuff.
And then this is what it looked like in the morning. So you can see we've lost a lot of whey. And it looks almost like mascarpone, but it's not quite as thick. And I personally love strained yogurt. It has a bit better texture. The taste is a little bit different as well because we're losing some of that lactose. But if you like it a little thicker than this or thinner, you can change the amount of time it's strained for. So just to compare, on the left is the unstrained yogurt, which is kind of the normal kind of grocery store yogurt. And then on the right, the thicker strained yogurt. And I, I personally like them both. Use them for different things. The thinner stuff's good for putting in pancakes, that sort of thing. Well, just eating, I like the strained yogurt. And sometimes I like to put things like maple syrup or jams and jellies just to make things a little bit more interesting. So you can get something like this. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoy.